Yo, so we finally got the debate between Ben Shapiro and Ben Shapiro of the left. And honestly, I was pretty damn frustrated. It felt like there was a lot of edging with no release. Their first argument around government funding and schools was a great example of what annoyed me. So Destiny says funding for stuff like decent gyms, free school lunches, and ACs will help poor kids do better in school. What can we do to help with schools? One is air conditioning, that children in hotter environments just don't learn as well. And then the second one is access to food. So like kids that are given like a breakfast or a lunch that's provided at school, like increases educational outcomes. Do you think there should be like some minimum threshold or minimum baseline or every school should have these like baseline things? Ben goes like, well, no, 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 no. Most issues begin way before at home. You're, you're starting at a second order question, which is what if we ignore what I would think are the big primary questions of education, namely family structure, value of education at home, how much you have parents who are capable or willing to help with homework. What are the incentive structures we can set up for a society that actually facilitate that, mm -hmm. right? All, all of these issues we're ignoring in favor of, say, air conditioning or lunch programs. I'm really surprised that Destiny just nodded along to this because there's something crucial here Ben says that was insane. Mm -hmm. Right, all, all of these issues we're ignoring in favor of, say, air conditioning or lunch programs. And now to me, the obvious thing Destiny should have said here is, hold on, we can culturally encourage more stable homes and still fund these programs. Even if we all somehow instantly became God-fearing, pious, sex only after marriage, Flanders types, poor kids getting free lunches in schools and being able to concentrate because their brains aren't boiling would still help their education outcomes. Because what Ben has sneakily done here is kind of argue against social spending by saying, but family values are also important. Even though they're not mutually exclusive at all, you can have both. It's like if I go, puppies are cute. And then he goes, well, actually, no, planes are fast. Like, it doesn't make any sense. You can try and fix the so-called moral decay of families and still make sure Timmy isn't hungry before learning trigonometry. Destiny kind of catches this, but instead of pointing out the false dichotomy, he follows Ben's pivot and tries arguing how a stable family unit is achieved, completely foregoing the initial funding point, which Ben never actually argued against, but importantly, he also never conceded to. I would say that like there is a minimum funding for schools that I think would help children. And then we go, well, the thing that would help them the most is two-parent households. And then I go, okay, well, two-parent households actually aren't the problem. Um, the issue is access to things like birth controls, so that people don't have children early on. And it's like, but the issue isn't actually birth control. The issue is actually you need a certain amount of money to move out early and to get married and then to have a two-parent household. So it's actually like economic opportunity. No. Well, it's not. You know, no, just two-parent households. That's yeah, it. but like what is the, what are the precursors? Don't fuck people for... before you're married and have babies. Sure. Done. And now they're just yapping. They're in the weeds sorting out minutia about why people choose to get married or not. How do cultures change? Human nature. Blah, blah, blah. Precursors Don't fuck people for... before you're married and have babies. Sure. Done. That's great. We can say that and try to fight against, you know, however many hundreds of thousands of years of human evolution, but people will have sex and people will make babies. And then they used to get married. The vast majority of people in this country mm -hmm. with kids used to be married. The vast majority of people with kids in this country sure. now are not married increasingly. Mm -hmm. That but is a lot obviously the... a societal change. Something yeah, changed. It wasn't... What the hell are you talking about? Something yeah, changed. It wasn't human evolution. But a lot of those things in terms of resting on whether or not people get married have to do with financial decisions. Do you have the money? People are worse off now than they were 50, 60 years ago. And right. Many months later. One of the biggest indicators for whether or not somebody's willing to get married is how much money people want to get taken out of their household. So, uh, is funding for school lunches good or bad? Can, can we just resolve that? But now that we are in this rabbit hole, things just get more insane. Ben goes so far as to say that even shotgun marriages, like, you know, where teenagers accidentally get pregnant so the parents force them to marry, those need to come back as a social norm. Meaning that everyone, poor, rich, and in between, used to get married. That is, by the way, a huge percentage of marriages in the United States used to be what they would call shotgun marriages, meaning that somebody knocked somebody up, and because they did not want the baby to be born outside of a two-parent household, they would then get married. Do we think that shotgun marriages, though, are a way to bring back equilibrium to education? Yes. If we... Yes. Absolutely. Yes, 100%. Do we a think child that... deserves a mother and a father. I was flabbergasted that Destiny barely pushed back on this at the time. Maybe it's because he viewed it as rhetorical suicide by Shapiro that he didn't need to add to. Or maybe he just thought it wouldn't be fruitful. And I get that you don't want to constantly attack someone and make them defensive. But sometimes you do have to go, wow, that is batshit insane, man. And also, I just think it would have been really interesting to explore this idea further. Like, wait, you think the answer to unstable homes is to force two kids who are not financially or emotionally ready for a serious relationship, much less to be parents into some kind of Frankenstein alliance? Now is when Destiny should bring up stuff like safe sex education, easy to access contraceptives and abortions. He needs to be like, hey, you conservatives hate all these effective ways of preventing unstable homes. And he needs to be confrontational in that way because nothing is moving in this conversation right now. This is stuff they both feel really strongly about and it could have made for a really interesting point of contention, you know, like a debate, which could by proxy solve for a lot of what is essentially conservatism versus liberalism. But none of this happens. No, instead, they decide to take us on a winding field trip to Yappington City. Well, let's say this. Do we think that that's a reasonable direction that society would ever take? Or is this like... Yes, it was the reasonable direction for nearly all of modern history. It was, but history moves in one direction. Right. Why? 
because of time. I mean, people people don't think that's a, in in what in what way is that? Is and I don't think we've ever I mean, like regressed yes, time, social standards back to. Now they're yapping about time and whether cultural regression is theoretically possible. We've just veered off course so much from actually discussing the topic. The Despite notion, Ruby the, the, notion the arc of history mm -hmm. constantly moves in one direction is belied by nearly all of the 20th century. Communism, Nazism, all of that was a regression from what was happening at, for example, in the 19th century, in the 20th century. What, in what way? But finally, at the end of the segment, Destiny reels it back in. Again, this notion that it is somehow an unbreakable, unshatterable barrier to get married and have kids. Why is that such a why is that such a challenge? It's I don't think it's unbreakable or unshatterable. I was just the initial point was for school, if we can provide a minimum level of educational stuff for children, that'd probably be good. He even forces something that kind of resembles a concession. I think generally per district. So what do you do when you have poor districts that can't afford air conditioner for their schools? I mean the idea there would be that presumably if the society, meaning the state, mm -hmm. and I generally don't mean the federal state, I mean sure. like the state of California, for mm -hmm. example, decides that everybody ought to have air conditioning, people will vote for air conditioning, and that's perfectly legal. And I don't think there's anything morally objectionable about okay. that per okay. se. Cool. But even that, it was like pulling teeth. Do you notice how Ben is doing his concession? He's like, hmm, well, it's perfectly legal. It's not necessarily morally objectionable. There's anything morally objectionable about okay. that per okay. se. Cool. I also don't think that that's going to heal anything remotely like the central problem. Oh, and so quickly he's back to galloping through his own points again. Like contrast that with how magnanimous Destiny was with everything to do with the family stuff. Um, I think that there are good conversations to be had about people getting married um, because stable families produce stable children that are less likely to commit crime, that are more likely to go to school, that are more likely to be productive members of society, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not gonna disagree with you on any of that. All right. of that is true. Destiny, after you gave him so much about all the two-parent household stuff, which to be honest, I'm not even sure how much he believes given the fact that he doesn't live with his own kid. Okay, that sounded like an underhanded insult for me. But what I meant by that is Destiny might not believe a two-parent household necessarily means more stability, but that people who get married tend to already be in a more stable position in the first place. And that stability is still very much possible in a single-parent household too. So I think conceding to all that marriage stuff was just him being conciliatory or not wanting to waste time with all the details. But anyway, giving him that is fine. But after you cock out like that, you gotta make him spread his legs for you and nail him. Like, hey, Ben, so voting in a direction that makes the government fund social programs like free school lunches can be a good thing, right? That's what you're saying. Get him to either very directly say yes or point out how much he's squirming. I feel like debates almost need moments like that because in the audience's eyes, nothing has actually happened. There have been no peaks, you know, no dunks that make them take pause regarding their own views. They're all just swimming along in comfortable nothingness. I know I'm kind of doing the perfect imaginary shower debate right now, but I just feel the balance of this was so off. Like, I know you can't go too hard, but you shouldn't be this soft either. This is impotent. And even though Ben did eventually concede the point rhetorically, he did not at all. Like highlight it for them in yellow marker. Yo, so I just clocked this while editing. Ben's waffling has like this hypnotic effect where it makes you lose sight of what is actually being said. Like is this entire premise basically that issues such as poor education, poverty, and hunger will mostly be solved by people just getting married more? Cause if so, that is just on its face so dumb, right? I mean, these issues existed in the past back when shotgun marriages were common too. In fact, they were often worse. Anyway. Okay, let's move on to Jan 6th. I thought this was Destiny's strongest segment by a distance, and I thought his opening statement was a really good rundown of everything surrounding that day. Did Donald Trump incite an insurrection on January 6th, 2021? Absolutely. I think that the conduct and the behavior leading up to and including January 6th, I think is wildly indefensible. I am excited to see Ben <laughs> try to, uh, yeah, the taking what I think any reasonable person would say, knowingly false information about elections being rigged or ballot boxes being stuffed or Ruby Freeman, you know, running ballots three times in Georgia, taking that knowingly false information and trying to call uh, state secretaries and stuff to, to have them flip their electoral vote. That was horrible. The plot that Eastman hatched in order to have these like false slates of electors where all seven states had citizens go in and falsely say that they were the duly elected uh, electors that could submit votes to Congress. That was insane. Asking or begging Pence to accept these false states of electors initially and then just say you should just throw it out completely and throw it to the House delegation, which was majority Republican. That was absolutely unbelievable. On the day of January 6th, trying to capitalize on the violence by him, Giuliani, and Eastman making phone calls to senators and congressmen saying, well, don't you think maybe you guys should delay the vote a little bit? You know, don't you think they're just really mad about the election? I think he said to McCarthy, they're more upset than you. And his utter dereliction of duty and not doing anything to uh, stop the, the rioting that happened on January 6th because he was too busy taking advantage of it. Yeah, I think all of these things are un unfathomable. And I think when you look at the plot from start to finish, clearly the goal the entire time was to circumvent the peaceful transfer of power. That was actually a 10 out of 10 clear, concise rundown. And to be fair, Ben in response very quickly admitted that what Trump did was morally wrong 
wrong and that he had no factual basis to stand on regarding his claims of fraud or whatever. I think he was saying things that are false, actually false, about his theories with regard to the election, about the election being stolen, about fraud. It's all adjudicated in court. He did not even bring many of the claims that he was brought publicly and all the rest of that. This was a pretty big moment. A lot of the other right-wing pundits are very reluctant to admit this. Where Ben disagrees is he doesn't believe that Trump knowingly did these things. So he shouldn't be held legally responsible. Do I think the information he was disseminating was false? Yes. Do I think that Donald Trump has a unique capacity to convince himself of nearly anything that is to his own benefit? Absolutely. Okay, again, Shapiro actually makes a really big concession here. In very soft, waffly language, Ben just basically said that Trump is legitimately batshit insane. Do you think that today Donald Trump knows that he lost the election? Absolutely. So I, I don't. Actually, <laughs> my feeling for Donald Trump was there were all these people around him that he trusted to investigate election fraud. He trusted Barr and the DOJ. He asked Pence, uh, his vice president, to look into it. He asked his chief of staff. He asked his legal counsel. He has so many people that uh, ostensibly uh, he trusts them if he's asking them to look into it. And when all of them looked into it and reported back to him, no, we found nothing. What in, unless we're going to literally make the concession that Trump might actually be a delusional psycho man at that point, should he not have realized like, well, OK, maybe that's nice thing. He should have realized the day of the election that he lost the election. But that's not. But again. Again, this is a big statement from Ben and a big moment for Desney. He set it up perfectly. Now you have to go for the throat. Like, hold on, Ben. So you do think Trump is a delusional psycho man. You think he is so disconnected from reality that he acts in ways that is indistinguishable from someone who is a malicious dictator. And you're okay voting in this person again? But Desney doesn't push hard enough to force a clear, non waffly emotionally impactful statement in that way. Instead, they get bogged down by legalese and Shapiro gets to yap, yap, yap. So yeah. I, I want to look at the actual text of the charges. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I, I'm sorry that I don't have them memorized. I believe one's a fraud charge that generally does not apply to cases like this. Generally, that fraud. Okay, I don't want to be unfair. This discussion is important. But holy shit, Destiny, can you just make it clear to the audience that what Ben is saying is that he's okay voting for a delusional, insane, narcissistic, psycho person? Because he did actually concede that, but he doesn't say that he's making that concession, and Destiny doesn't make him say that he's making that concession. And the best Destiny could get out of him was this. I mean, I'll, I'll concede that he's more inappropriate than others. I, I just okay. don't see the that most inappropriate. Is Sure. Okay. Most inappropriate is like some shit you'd hear in Pride and Prejudice. How has he distilled all of Trump's actions surrounding Jan 6th with soft ass language like that? So I was thinking of going through the whole debate and nitpicking it like this, but I'm not going to do that. Instead, I want to bring your attention to the comments and the response to this debate. You look at it, no one is actually arguing or even discussing anything. No one is talking about any of the points Destiny or Shapiro made. They're all just patting themselves on the back going, wow, wasn't that so civil and polite? Uh, ben Shapiro and uh, Destiny had a massive debate where they were very respectful to each other and it was an incredible poker. This jerk off session over how everything was so civil is the cringiest shit to me. Don't get me wrong, being polite and nice is good. But when that's the main takeaway for the vast majority of the audience, then I think that's telling. No one learned a damn thing and no one was made to feel uncomfortable with their views. Quite simply, my issue is Destiny was just way too weak. I understand that he wants to come across as a reasonable liberal or whatever, but being this tame, at a certain point, you're almost controlled opposition. I think to the average person, it may seem like these two had comparably reasonable arguments, but they really didn't. Like rhetorically, he just got mogged and it under played how good his points were and how insane Ben's were. I wonder if he just used this as like a bridge building exercise. Maybe next time he'll go in harder. I, I don't know. Also, there just wasn't enough debate in this debate. Straight up, it was boring. There was so much random waffling. I just feel Destiny let Shapiro get away with brutal murder and then we all clapped because we they were so civil about it. Yeah, I guess that's it. This debate sucked. Bye.